Hi children, welcome to EduCup. Today we are with a new video from grade 11 science. This is unit 11 electronics. You can subscribe my channel for more videos. Electronics has made a huge impact on our day-to-day -day lives. We use many electronic devices in our day-to-day -day activities. Mobile phone, computers, televisions and radios are some examples for such electronic devices. Materials that conduct electricity are known as electrical conductors. Conductors. Let's see some examples. Copper, aluminium, iron, lead. And there are mixed conductors. Examples are brass, nichrome and magnesium. Materials that do not conduct electricity, like ebonite, polythene, plastic, dry wood, asbestos, glass, are known as electrical insulators. The reason behind the ability to conduct electricity is the ability of some of the electrons in the atoms of such materials to move freely within the conductor. Electrons in the outshell of conductors act in this manner since they are not tightly bound to the nucleus. Since interatomic bonds between the atoms of insulators are strong, there are very few electrons that are free to move. Meanwhile, some materials conduct small amount of electricity. Such materials are known as semiconductors. Materials such as silicon, germanium in their crystalline form show such properties. These elements belong to the fourth group in the periodic table and have four electrons in their outermost shell. Such elements from crystal lattice structures by sharing the four electrons in their outermost shell to make covalent bonds with four nearby atoms and thereby acquiring a stable electronic configuration having eight electrons in the outermost shell. However, these bonds are rather weak and can be broken from thermal energy available even at room temperature, releasing electrons. An electron deficiency can be observed at the position that the free electrons occupied previously. In this first figure shows you covalent bond of silicon lattice at 0 Kelvin. All the bonds are complete at this temperature. Second figure shows that some bonds have been broken releasing some free electrons at a temperature higher than 0 Kelvin. An electron deficiency can be observed at the position that the free electron occupied previously. Such positions with an electron deficiency are known as holes. Due to the positively charged protons in the nucleus, a hole gives rise to positive charge that has not been neutralized. That means in a neutral atom, the number of protons in the nucleus is equal to the number of electrons. Therefore, a hole is equivalent to a positive charge. In semiconductors, not only electrons contribute to the construction of electricity. When an electron in an adjacent atom jumps to an atom with a hole having a positive charge, the position of hole can be changed. By changing the position of hole from one atom to another is, in this manner, holes can move around the lattice and contribute and conduct in the current. Electrons act as negative charge carriers while holes act as positively charged carriers. Therefore, when an electric potential difference 
is applied across the semiconductor, holes move from the positive to the negative potential while electrons move from the negative to the positive potential and the current flows from the positive to the negative potential. In metallic conductors, the charge carriers that conduct electricity are the negatively charged electrons. In semiconductors, the negatively charged electrons as well as the positively charged holes act as the charge carriers that contribute in the conduction of electricity. Since a hole generates in breaking of bond to release an electron, the number of carrier electrons present in the semiconductor is equal to number of holes. Therefore, the semiconductor lattice is electrically neutral. Let's discuss about intrinsic semiconductors. Pure semiconductor materials such as silicon and germanium that exist in crystalline form as mentioned above are known as intrinsic semiconductors. Let's see the effect of temperature on the conduction of electricity. Since the random motion of free electrons increase as the temperature is increased, a rise in the temperature inhibits the current flow. Therefore, a temperature rise in conductors causes a decrease in the conductivity. That means increase in the resistivity. However, in semiconductors, a rise in the temperature breaks bond generating more holes and free electron causing an increase in the conductivity. That means decrease in the resistivity. Let's discuss about the extrinsic semiconductors. Let us consider what happens when a minute amount of element phosphorus is mixed to an intrinsic semiconductor such as silicon. Phosphorus is an element in group 5 of periodic table and has 5 electrons in the outermost shell. A phosphorus atom makes a number of electrons in its outermost shell aided by acquiring 4 electrons from 4 nearby silicon atoms around it. In the process, one of five electrons is left behind without taking part of forming a bond. This electron has opportunity to move about freely in the lattice. Now you can see a silicon lattice dropped by phosphorus. This shows how a phosphorus atom forms bond with silicon atoms. The electron left behind increases the conductivity of lattice. Since negatively charged electrons are introduced to the lattice as charge carriers, the semiconductor is known as negative typed or n type semiconductor. Semiconductors whose carries have been increased by dropping it with another element are known as extrinsic semiconductors. By dropping an Intrinsic semiconductor with other elements in group 5 such as arsenic and antimony, also n-type extrinsic semiconductors can be formed. Since electrons are denoted to the lattice by group 5 elements, they are known as denoatoms. If silicon, which is an intrinsic semiconductor, is doped with an element in group 3, such as boron, the boron atom forms bond with a nearby silicon atoms. However, since there are only three electrons in the outermost shell of the boron atom, there is a deficiency of one electron in order to form four bonds. You can see a silicon lattice dubbed by the boron. A hole exists at the point where the electron is deficient in the boron atom to form a bond. Since holes can conduct electricity as positive charges, the conductivity of silicon increases. As a hole is equivalent to positive charge, such 
extrinsic semiconductors are known as positive or p type semiconductors because the whole concentration in p type semiconductors is such greater than the electron concentration holes are called majority carriers and electrons are called minority carriers by doping an intrinsic semiconductor with other elements in group 3 such as aluminium gallium and indium instead of b also b type extrinsic semiconductors can be formed since holes that can be released receive electrons are produced by group 3 elements they are known as accept atoms this is what we have to learn as the first part of electrons unit in grade 11 science our next video from same lesson pn junctions thank you